Hi, I'm the Golem. Today I'll be reviewing the Watch Me Go Broke YouTube channel. As far as I am aware, the Watch Me Go Broke guy doesn't say what his name is. I'll be referring to him as Mr. Multiplex, or Multi for short, as many of his intros for his videos are shot in a movie theater. Multi often does a comic intro before his review. I have no issues with comic intros in a watch review. I invented this format when I was doing watch reviews. Some of Multi's comic intros go on for way too long. One comic intro, a joke about wives, that for me was excruciating to watch, went on for three minutes. Comedy is very subjective. A lot of people loved The Carol Burnett Show and it was on the air for over a decade. I didn't like The Carol Burnett Show and I don't, for the most part, like Multi's humor. This doesn't necessarily mean Multi isn't funny to some people. If you read Multi's comments, it appears as if some people think Multi is hilarious. While I'm not going to attempt to pass judgment on Multi's humor, I can tell you that Multi is in way over his head in his choice of some of his topics of humor. Some of Multi's comic material includes dick jokes and duty jokes. The last time the dick joke was pulled off successfully was in 1979 by Monty Python, and the only successful dick joke in recorded history made prior to that was made by Aristotle in 321 BCE during a rowdy toga party. Many others have tried the dick joke, but it has always fallen flat coming off as juvenile and amateurish. No one has ever pulled off a tasteful duty joke. And because the topic of duty is so childish and gross, the duty joke is automatic career death for anyone who tries it. Do you remember this guy? His name is Louis C.K. Two years ago, C.K. was at the top of the comic world. Many people think the Me Too movement caused C.K. to disappear. CK's perversity is not what brought him down. Everyone knew what a sicko he was. CK had become so taken with his mastery as a comedian that he thought he could defy comedic gravity and pull off a tasteful duty joke. CK flew too close to the sun. There's one type of joke that Multi does in every single episode which is wearing very thin these days. His signature line, quote, let's awkwardly bend over a table and take a look, unquote, to me is unmistakably a derogatory reference to gay sex. Multi, judging from his comments, seems very popular with his fans. Certainly some fraction of his fan base must be gay. How Multi gets away with this mean-spirited gay joke is quite beyond me. Before elaborating on Multi's watch reviewing skills, I will point out that I have a rule that if a reviewer can't pronounce the name Bulova correctly or calls the second hand of a watch the seconds hand, he or she gets an automatic fail. Multi failed both of these tests. I like Multi's narration style a lot. Multi has a real gift for narration. He has the soothing, reassuring demeanor of a good sports announcer doing a play-by-play. -play. Before Multi does a close-up of the watch he's reviewing, he shows an image of what looks like a rug. It's probably some form of mat that he's putting over a table, but it leaves the bad impression that he's doing the review on the floor. Multi does commercial watches, but he seems to specialize in reviewing cheap Chinese knockoffs. Personally, I don't find these types of watches very interesting, but there seems to be a healthy appetite for this type of watch. Multi says in his San Martin Sub Homage version 2 video that, quote, San Martin is synonymous with making great quality homages, unquote. When I hear statements like this, I think, really, what planet is Multi living on? San Martin watches, while not terrible, are far from great. By saying San Martin is synonymous with great quality homages, this has the effect of lowering the bar. 
Multi is such an industry cheerleader that he was reluctant to pass judgment on the Timex M79, saying he was on the fence about the watch. The Timex M79 is, in my opinion, egregiously overpriced. I am not alone in this opinion. Many other reviewers, even complete sickle fans, couldn't bring themselves to endorse the M79. In Multi's Pagini Design 1639 video, he says, quote, this is the clasp that it comes with, and the clasp is not bad. It's actually a pretty decent clasp. It's a nod to the Submariner Oyster style clasp. It doesn't have any micro adjustments, and that's the main reason that I switched it out. This is what's happening here. The clasp that the Pagini Design Watch that Multi is reviewing is missing micro adjusts, which is a pretty horrible flaw, even for a dirt cheap watch. If a clasp lacks micro adjusts, you have to get incredibly lucky to get a good fit with the watch, as the granularity of bracelet size adjustment is one bracelet link, which is roughly 10 millimeters. This explains why Multi had to switch out the clasp. It's shocking to me how Multi can call a clasp that lacks micro adjusts a pretty decent clasp. A clasp that lacks micro adjusts is virtually useless and a complete deal breaker. Unless the bracelet comes with a half link and multi leaves no indication that this uh, was the case, by definition, a clasp without micro adjusts sucks and is useless. Multi goes on to say in this video, quote, the bracelet has screw links and I've had to take all of them out that could be adjusted to fit this different style clasp. I don't know if this is something you'll have to do. Unquote. Hearing stuff like this from a watch reviewer sounds completely insane. Who has the time as well as the spare watch parts lying around to hack a watch bracelet in order to get the watch to fit? I certainly don't. Multi sums up the watch by saying, quote, so what do I like about this watch? Well, obviously I like the price. $65, and you're getting a ceramic bezel, a sapphire crystal, a stainless steel case, screw down crown, an NH35 movement, a solid end link screw link bracelet with a pretty decent clasp, all for $65. Kind of hard to complain about anything, unquote. As Multi points out, Pagini Design spec the watch up the yin yang and priced it cheaply, but they neglected one small yet vital feature micro adjusts, which makes the watch useless for nearly everyone. Multi makes the mistake of conflating good specs and low price with value. If you cannot wear the watch because the bracelet is either way too tight or way too loose, the watch is not a good value. To me, this is basic common sense. In Multi's Citizen Promaster EcoDrive video, Multi accurately reported that the prices for this Citizen Promaster were skyrocketing and then did a review of the watch. I bought this watch about three years ago for $150. At one point, it was being fire sailed at $135. I never reviewed this Promaster because it was a watch that had already been reviewed to death. There was nothing that I nor anyone else could say that would meaningfully add to the canon of information about this watch. Beyond the issue of the watch being over-reviewed, it was fairly clear to me for years that despite it still being listed on the Citizen Watch website, that this Promaster was on Citizen's chopping block as it was being fire-sailed on the gray market. And Citizen was no longer actively promoting the watch. I don't see it as being in the consumer's best interest to review a watch that either has been or probably will be discontinued. If a watch that's been on the gray market for a while, like this Citizen Promaster, is skyrocketing in price, it's highly likely that it's dwindling in supply and will soon vanish. Not so surprisingly, a few weeks later, I saw a video by Maverick Watch Reviews announcing that this Promaster had come out in two new color variants. 
I didn't watch Maverick's video because I find him really annoying. I didn't fully investigate these new color variants, but they appear to be expensive JDM versions. So this news doesn't seem very exciting, but it does, I think, demonstrate why it's not a good idea to review watches that are dead, even if the watch company hasn't officially filled out the death certificate. There are probably a lot of pissed off guys right now that paid double of what they should have paid to get their hands on one of the last remaining old style blue or black dial versions of this ProMaster when they could have bought a new green or red dial version had they waited a few more weeks. In one video, Multi uses gloves that look like they've been peed on. He apologizes for the condition of the gloves. We as viewers don't want an apology. We're here for a watch review. In a later video, Multi has replaced the rancid pea-colored gloves with some clean ones, but complains about the gloves being oversized. Multi's glove problems are his problem. The only bitching and moaning that Multi should be doing is about the watches he's reviewing, which he doesn't do nearly enough of. I realize that there's a worldwide pandemic and it's hard to buy some things, but you have to be a professional and stop apologizing and complaining and just do your job. Multi is way, way too magnanimous in his assessment of watches for me to have any trust in his judgment. I cannot endorse Watch Me Go Broke. Please like, please subscribe. Correction. In 1980, the movie Caddyshack, written by Douglas Kenny, Brian Doyle Murray, and Harold Ramis, and directed by Harold Ramis, conquered for the first and only time in recorded human history the duty joke. Caddyshack remains, to this day, one of the funniest and greatest movies ever made.